Welcome to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out, the what? most exciting TV yeah, on TV. Yeah, you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Robert Witters. Yeah. Judy Nathans. All right. And it's today... It's December 3rd. December 3rd. Yeah, We're cruising right along. Yeah, it's the start of winter, a real winter. We had Wait, real snow. What do you call it? Meteorological winter or something like that? Is that like what that? it is? I've heard something right, like that, Right, because winter yeah. really isn't until the 21st. Right, exactly. But, but the always... snow on the ground and no school today. No hey. School. As soon as I saw that Boston had closed, I said, uh... Because Cambridge always follows Boston. Um, of course, it was school for me. But oh, MIT. Yeah, universities no, they actually, generally don't close unless They, it's they like, actually canceled right? classes, anything that was taking place before 10 a.m. Oh, that's good. At MIT. Because the to traffic, be, to be on the roads then yeah, would have been awful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the biggest issue is actually staff getting to and from. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, and anything. There's, al there's yep. also another yeah. issue where there's a lot of people who are be working at MIT have children in schools, and if schools close, exactly. and they have right. to come into work, then what are they going to do with right. the kids? Just leave them home alone? Right. Right. So right. anyway, so it's it was it was anyway not it was yeah. not horrible. But it's, so you taught. So I definitely yeah. I definitely, you teach on Tuesdays. Um, I Just teach uh, morning, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But oh, because you, you always seem to be doing stuff on the computer Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, so you yeah. Do that at work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not today. The, right. Today the uh, the. Um, Support staff came and took oh. my computer away. Uh oh. They're going to bring what me another. What did you do? Uh, oh. it, it wasn't me. It oh. wasn't me. Okay. But my office computer got whisked away. Oh. And now I'm living in dire fear that tomorrow morning I'm going to do want to do really basic stuff and nothing's going to work. So you're careful about keeping that just office stuff. And uh, no, not really. But the thing yeah. is, I have a lot of. I'm I'm big into duplications, just to have oh, redundancy right. oh, throughout. Oh, absolutely. Anybody that yeah. knows anything. So should, anything yeah. I have posted on a website exists on one or more computers. So you're elsewhere. saying that they now have access to all of your stuff, or have they always had access? They have. Yeah, they could. They wow, could, are you? They could like ruin that? me. No, seriously. I mean, do they? But you plug into their network, so they're going to have access anyway. You know, they, they could do it anyway. To, yeah, right? sure, sure. But it's always a little bit scary. When well, ever since I go. read the Edward Snowden book, I mean, you know, nothing, yeah. nothing is safe. Nothing. I know. I trust these folks. All they right. Do something. I know. You have to draw your yeah. limits. Okay. So, um, so, so December 3rd. December 3rd. And, and um, one thing since we last met. Which was just here last in TV week. TV Land. Right. Um, I did manage to get, uh, you know, not to be obsessing too much more on elections. Oh, but right. But the thing is, one of the things people were really curious about was who voted, right? And how old? How old? Age distribution? It was in the. Do you know the, how many were newly registered? Do you have that? I could find that out, but I didn't bother to find that okay. out. But that would certainly to me do be it. an interesting fact. It, it didn't seem like it was like gigantic numbers of new okay. registrants. All right. But um, but yeah, there were definitely uh, increases. Um, okay. One thing I'll say here before saying anything else is that. Mm -hmm. um, if you compare 2017 to 2019, mm -hmm. there were 66,354 registered in 17, 68,839 in 2019. So there, there were 3.7 percent increase in registered voters. Wow. The number of people who actually voted, though, dropped a bit. I you think want to show this about, or not? Uh, oh, we'll I'm do good. that in one sec. Okay. So it's a, dropped about four, a little close to 5%. With the so, number of people that voted yeah, dropped? Yeah. Yeah, there was 20, 2017, it was 22,407. Uh-huh. It dropped down to 21,329. So about 1,000. Um, so it, yeah, it dropped yeah. about four, in the neighborhood of about 5% drop. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting was, um, you know, it wasn't so much, it, it's one thing if you have an overall drop, in, in all categories of 5%, because then you wouldn't expect to see any changes. But, mm. you know, there was this 22-year-old kid who was running, um, the, uh, Burhan Azim. Yeah. Uh, there was another younger candidate. But there was only one opening, though. But the, the, and to that, there were three. Yeah, there was a lot more excitement, it's, I think, in, in 2017. 2017. Yeah, a lot um, more possibility of change. Yeah, um, yeah, with lots of open seats uh, yeah. uh, and whatever. Yeah. Of course, we always like to say all seats are open. True, but you know, incumbents but, but usually... Incumbents are most yeah. likely to be uh, returned. Um, so I was curious and say, well, was there going to be yeah. some big, big shift? Yeah. And, and the truth is, there wasn't too many really big shifts, mm -hmm. but there were some things, if you know where to look, Okay, that were kind which of interesting. is what you do. So we're going to so, see that now. So let's take a look here. So is this high enough up, or should I go? Yeah, ahead? actually, let's go scoop down a little bit here to 2017, which is one right below it, right here. You, go. you want it just to be on. Yeah, that one. just to okay. sort of, for the sake of comparison. So okay. 
2017 election was really kind of extraordinary in that there was something in the neighborhood of about 5,000 new voters. Wow. More people voted than usual. Mm-hmm. It was a gigantic increase. And uh, actually, go scoot down even further. To 15? 2015. What you'll okay. see is a really, really noticeable change. So, okay, so these bars here represent three-year increments from 18 to 20, 21 to 23. Okay, and this is the age down here, 20, yeah, 20. Yeah, the ages okay. are on the bottom. And All right. The, the, the actual number of voters, not percentage, but the number of so voters. The number, so the highest category. people that voted were in the yeah, 68. And so what you see in yeah. 2015 was kind of typical of, mm-hmm. of not only of, of that year, in prior years, uh-huh. where you see a peak of people like around up there, upper 60s, actually. Right, yeah. Uh, as voting, baby boomers. Right, baby yeah. boomers, yeah. Uh, right? And then, of course, it inevitably, you know, it drops down sure. as you head toward older voters. Yeah. Uh, and down in, you see a kind of a rise in the younger ranges. Right around peaking here. Peaking around yeah, the 27 yeah. to 29 range. Yeah, which is post-school. Right? I mean, they're not right. college. And yeah. then so as you, you know, so, that, you know, you figure, okay, those yeah. are like some, you know, the presence of graduate students, whatever. Right. So if you scroll, scroll back, back up to, to 2017, this is what was really extraordinary. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. You saw this gigantic Holy mackerel. spike. And not the college kids, but the 29-year-olds. Yeah. Now, and the 20, you know, as years. some have speculated, and I think this is yeah. accurate, Mm-hmm. Um, that's also around the age uh, Sumbul Siddiqui was in, and then she yes. kind of came out of nowhere and was this really big presence. Right. She, so, she actually was about she what? Let's see. Two, she would have been about twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that there were yeah. you know, the presence of candidates like Sumbul Siddiqui that look like Sean you know, Cherney, that were your age. Who were that's younger, true. You're right. And they recruited, mm-hmm. brought out people who absolutely might, previous, might otherwise not, not been not that have, interested, not been all that interested. Yeah. That's so you, interesting. So you wow, still have higher a, than any of these. Yeah, it just jumped higher than yeah. than the Look older categories, right? In fact, it doesn't get even until uh, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. right, right. Now yeah. if you go up to 19, you'll see that yeah. there's still that that larger numbers there, but it's kind of spread out a little bit. Uh, True, and, this stayed and higher. So, the, so you dropped yeah. from a 1,600 peak down to about 1,400, which was more of a drop-off than in other age categories. Mm. Um, for the most part, everything else was not all that different, though, there, though I'll show you, actually, if we scoot down even further, I'll show you some. Where, Where are so, we yeah, going? So go the other beyond, way? Yeah, so all the way down Beyond 15? To, yeah, okay, so here's what I did is I just basically defined some sort of comparison. You want this, this chart here? Yeah, so okay. what I did was I just put 2017 in green and 2019 yeah. in the reddish color. Mm-hmm. So what you can now see when you look at that in the very youngest ranges. Yeah. You know, the youngest, youngest range is no change. But then in the uh, 21 to 23, there's a little bit of an increase. This is in a year where there was a 5% decrease in voters, but there was a small increase. But no- noticeably in the uh, just upper 20s range, there was a, actually yet another increase. Mm. But then when you get up into mm. the, you know, the, the late 20s, early 30s, right, like up in the, uh, that that right neck here. of the woods. No, 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 no. So you see where that big, tall, tall green peak is? Yeah. That was the one that's oh, left 29. over from 2017. Yeah. Right. Right. Notice how that just dropped. So, so, yeah. so right next to it is the 2019 version. Mm-hmm. They moved. So, so there was a, <laughs> well, or they got older and they moved yeah. into the next category and they weren't oh, replaced by the next from uh, two right. years later. Right, good point. What's the right. one underneath it? Is that something you right. want to look at? Um, more yeah, well, actually, I'll highlight it. But okay. the thing is, so it's kind of hard to do this. So if you yeah. actually scroll down one further, yeah. what I did is I just stuck some sort of arrows just to point out yeah, things okay. that I thought were interesting. Yeah. So you can see there in the um, in the range, which is about what is that, twenty four to twenty six, yeah. was where there was an actual increase uh-huh. in a year when in fact oh. there was an overall decrease. You're talking about the red now. Yeah. Right? Now I'm yeah. gonna personally interpret yeah. that. It's a little tough mm. to do this. It's largely speculative. Yeah. Saying that there were, you know, the Baran Azim uh, targeting a lot of people down at MIT. Yeah. Not necessarily, you know, undergraduates, but um, but you know, graduate students, people who are kind of in that mm. range there. But well, what about Jivon? Isn't he? And Jivon, yeah. uh, Sabrina Wheeler, yeah. which I suspect uh, also would be responsible for some of yeah. that. Yeah. The interesting thing is, is that when you look at the three year, three years later bar, there was actually a real drop off in that peak from 2017. Talking about the green here. The yeah, thing, green yeah. dropping down to the yeah. to the red. And if you look at all the age ranges going further up, they're all drop, 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 drop. The green right? seems to stay 
above the red, though, all the well, time. The, well, that's because that was 2017. Oh, oh, See? oh, right. I'm, and I'm getting And then the reds confused. are all okay. below. So there See? was definitely a, a drop in voters. Except vote when you where? get to about 70, just over 70 years uh, of age. Here we go. So if, you have, if you're in the range of yeah. 72 to 74, Hello. There, was, <laughs> <laughs> there was an increase. Yes. So no, just below that, it's to the right there, you see? To the so right So you went here. green jumps up to red. No, one over. Here. Right? One over, to the right, to the right. That's it. it right oh, there. that's that's so older that, than 74. Uh, that's actually no, in the 72 in... to 74 range. Oh, so that okay. actually jumps up a little bit. Oh, I see what you're saying. And then yeah. if you go through the next three-year band, uh, which is the one that's a little bit older even, it jumps up there as well. And actually, you get a few increases for... I know what that's about. What do you, you think that is? I think it's the whole AHL thing, and it was a lot of property I agree. owners I agree. and people that you know were yeah. older, so they've been here a long time. That's exactly yeah. my interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the one thing I, I want to say, though, about all of this stuff mm -hmm. is that, yeah, there are little effects. You can notice things in the youngest ranges mm -hmm. where there were some increases, and in the older ranges where... Not the much old, older ages, but the well, thing is... Well, look at is, this. These people voted yeah, the same. It's I probably know. the same person. The same person, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is that, uh, is that you saw yeah. an effect there yeah. uh, in the, you know, the 70 people who are 70 yeah. to 80 range. Yeah. And you saw some in the, like, 26 and below. Yeah. And then everything else was just, I wouldn't call it uniform drop-off, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it was Closer. basically, yeah. you know, just sort of like a, um, yeah. like a decrease wow. in there. That's you know, amazing. So, um... So, yeah, I look at that, and, I, and what I think I see is, um, yeah, I think you're correct that yeah. some of the older voters may also be homeowners, and maybe they were... They're very energized, yeah. They got energized mm -hmm. over the overlay proposal, so mm -hmm. they came out in some numbers. Yeah. But the thing is, is that there was a larger effect, I think, um, in just in the relative drop-off across the board. Yeah. But the thing is, then, also, I think the reason why we ended up with G Jeevan, Sabrina Wheeler, as opposed to Craig Kelly, was probably yeah. because of the... Some right. of the increased numbers on the other end of the range. True, you know, and the, the whole transfer range. thing, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like the um, one thing I, I really got to, got to thinking about this was the Jeevan Sabrina Wheeler election. How old is he, by the way? Uh, he's in his 30s somewhere. Is he the one that lives with a lot of other people, or is he married? I think that he has, he her, has, her. He has some roommates. I think they both have roommates, but that's not uncommon. All right, so they have roommates, they're renters, both of them. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I got to thinking about that, and I said, you know, one of the things I think we talked about last week yeah. was um, that, you know, he was also on three different slates, so to whatever degree slate uh, right. dynamics. Right, and one of them was sort of a little bit, not opposed, but he, he kind of, he, he got into the right places, I right. guess. Right, yeah. So, yeah. so basically he received some benefit from getting yes. feed from other slate members. Or being on a, any slate, where slate. some people that didn't have any slates right. I mean, were but, not... But yeah. there's one other factor that I, I yeah. think I'm willing to go out on a limb and suggest okay. here, too, which is that, right. you, know, is, is, uh, um, you know, as much as I, I hate to acknowledge this, yeah. You know, you know, we, we still are, and many of us, I think, are still kind of locked into a CCA versus independent mindset. Or mm -hmm. in the more modern age, we, we think, oh, the ABC group is pushing one end of things and it versus the Cambridge residence lines. But the truth is, is, I think, that this Our Revolution group may not be a big player yet or, or maybe never will be. But the thing is, is that um, they are... I think some they have um, in their ranks some people who are pretty savvy with uh, social media and networking, and you know when you look at candidates like Nadine Mazin when he was elected to the city council, there was a certain group of people you know you know remember he was also a, a spokesperson organizer people with this um, Occupy Boston group oh yeah right as was Mike Connolly. Um, mm -hmm. And Jeevan Sabrina Wheeler very much identifies himself as a democratic and socialist and, and, and the Bernie and Sanders whole crowd. Movement. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, is that that's even though we have nonpartisan municipal elections, and the revolu the our revolution phenomenon is more of a national phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think that there are it, probably there are enough people who sort of adhere to that at least for the moment. Oh, absolutely. That no, in I fact that. their yeah. votes are clustering, so that they might be if they wanted to. Oh, I think it's a force claim, to be reckoned with, and I think it's going to affect the next election, for good or bad. Um, maybe so, yeah. But you I know, mean, I, I still think of it as more of a I national thing. I mean, the big thing. election, not the yeah. Election. I think it was primarily national, <laughs> yeah. but so it was sort of interesting to see, uh, you know, 
is it a factor? It's certainly a factor, I think, here in oh, the local elections. Oh, it's definitely elections. a factor. There's, there's, there's stuff going on with young, the younger people, and I have to say yeah. younger. Not me, not yeah. even you. Yeah. If you're younger than but I am. I, but, you know, so you know, much of us will focus on the, you know, the, yeah. the ABC versus CCC mm -hmm. or overlay versus non-overlay, mm -hmm. whatever. But the thing is, is that independent of all of that, you know, you, there were certain candidates like Chief and Sabrina Wheeler, who I think, regardless of where he stood on that issue, you know, or uh, or whether he was on this slate or that slate or whatever, yeah. I think he's probably the one who benefited most from the the revolution. Yeah. Uh, well, but you know, Patty Nolan signed on with, got signed on with them, and and Dennis right. Carlong, oh, yeah. so everyone yeah, yeah. jumped yeah, on that so, wagon. And it's very it's hard just, to no. sort of. Yeah. Uh, squeeze yeah. out of the data uh, yeah. any interpretation as to where those votes were coming from. I right. would say Patty Nolan probably benefited from some the of Jan those Devereaux. older and homeowners right. or whatever. It, she so, crossed the board there. So yeah. some of those bumps you saw in the numbers mm -hmm. over there probably were helping her out. Yep. And uh, some of those younger voters were probably helping uh, uh, Gina yes. and Sabrina Wheeler to be the two new additions to the council. Right. So They wanted new faces. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I also broke it out. I didn't publish it or anything like that by ward and precinct to see how the trends changed. Yeah, we show, were, I think we showed that last week. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, I didn't actually do a comparison oh. of ward and precinct totals uh, for 2017 versus 2019. Okay. It's not as interesting in my mm -hmm. view, but one thing, the one thing you definitely do notice is that mm -hmm. there was a gigantic increase in the two MIT precincts that was ever, for every bit Baranazine. Yeah, I mean, that is a, I guess, every that runs for uh, office here has to pay attention to the MIT population. Right? Um, I don't you think, think it's it really generally true, but I no? think is is that you know it's sort of like it did uh, with Nadine, it did with Leland Chung. I think the way you look at it you know? is that if you're the type of candidate who might find an appeal too. in I mean, those in MIT. those places, yeah. then there is this available yeah. mine. You can mine those right. locations to squeeze votes. Because they have lots of graduate students right. to be compared to. But if you don't Harvard. mine them, they don't. They probably won't come out. And, no, but um, I think but they they're were there. Yeah. yeah, it's not a, historically. It's never been all that easy to actually get um, the student vote to work for you but maybe it's a little that's loosening know, up a social bit media and, and everything now yeah. and, oh, and saying you're an mit graduate or whatever yeah I yeah don't know. actually there's one other thing i thought maybe we should yeah. should where is related. it though let's do the dollar per vote um where is that see the next tab over here okay okay here we go. so one of the things i've been keeping track of during the election even before all the candidates right. were known um, was just you know keeping track of how because I'm kind of curious because there, there has been this proposal that who knows if it's actually going to go anywhere well, about financing? about public oh, no. financing for municipal I'm election campaigns. I'm not paying for people to run for this. I'm not inclined to go for it. Either. I think there should be caps. People have talked about yeah. that and advertise it when they go over it. Right. But I don't want the money in Cambridge going to. Anybody that wants to run here, I'm sorry. I, and, I and, tend and, to you know, agree just, with you on that. I would really but, fight that. But the thing is here is that even if, uh, even if you don't believe in public financing for local municipal elections, yeah. and I primarily do not, yeah. um, still there is this notion, there is, I think, Councilor Toomey and others have floated notions about that there should be um, limits on how much you spend or limits how much you Well, that's you what we just talked about. That's what I said. Yeah. That some people said a cap. I mean, just saying, you right. know, a voluntary a voluntary cap. Right. But the thing is, is, you know, so there were actual numbers floated by Councillor Toomey saying really? if you run what for school the committee, then yeah. you shouldn't raise, you shouldn't have to spend more than X number of dollars. Oh, actually gave a And the same thing with, uh, it was something like a $50,000 cap, or 50. maybe it was less on, on city council. I would hope it's council. less. That's really a lot of well, money. So with part of my personal mission this year was also just to keep track of it, to say, yeah. okay, let's, let's actually look and mm -hmm. see... If there was that kind of cap, right? What yeah. what actually is the scale here? Right. You know, how much money are people actually raising to run campaigns? How effective is it? You mm -hmm. know, can you run a successful campaign on and not short spend money? A lot of money. Yeah. Right. So so let me, let's yeah. take a look over here. Right. So okay. So this is and again this is a little I've sorted it by dollars per number one vote, which is a little embarrassing, honestly, because if you're a candidate. So you'd... so what's the order here though? Right, so this is oh. just basically if you... But it's not in any It's ranked order. by number one dollars per vote. That's why it's oh. highlighted in blue at the top. Oh, so this right? is the cost the most yeah. and then I mean, down. You can sort by it. any of these categories, but, but this the thing is, is, is that, that if you do sense. that, so, yeah. so if you see somebody like Charles Franklin, he spent a, 
a fair amount of money. He you know, raised quite a bit of money, actually. A lot of it was his own money, too. Oh. So, but he, so he All spent right. about $31,000 on a campaign, but still did not get that yeah. many number one votes. So yeah. he ends up kind of pushing. And by the way, these numbers are not final because they're still paying bills. Mm. Right? But are they still getting money in? A uh, little bit. A little bit here and there. But but the money coming in seems to be less of a factor now. Risa Metnik. Uh, but but of, wouldn't the money per vote still be based on what they brought in? No, dollars per and vote what? is based on how much money you spend. Oh, you spent out of that money. Votes. I get it. Just okay. Division. So until you know right. that. Now, Risa right. Metnik, you know, yeah. she was a late addition, so to sure. be perfectly fair, yeah. as a very, very late addition, um, she wasn't going to get do more that work. many number yeah. one votes. She spent $16,000, so ends up being a yeah. number. Mark McGovern is sort of the more interesting one, I think, in this. In yeah. that he spent a ridiculous amount of money, right. $93,000 plus, wow. and, and growing, raised over $100,000, came in with a respectable number. But he number. spent almost all of it. Uh, well, right. that's what you well, have. Well, that's what you do. You and raise that, it, you spend that's it. why it... Uh, so, so, yeah, he got 16, yeah. 21 uh, number one votes, yeah. you know, more than enough to get himself elected eventually. Yeah. But, you know, it ends up being pretty costly at over $57. Mm -hmm. And again, this is this is rising, too. Right. Um, Adrienne Musgrave, you know, still up she in the neighborhood of, of about $50, yeah. $50 per number one vote. Yeah. Now, if you scroll down a little bit more, though, so you see Nicola Williams, Ben Simon, Quentin Zondervan mm -hmm. also spent about $34 per number one vote mm -hmm. to get his 1392. Oh, he raised a lot of money, too. Oh, he, and again, he spends a good chunk yeah. of his own money yeah. as well. Okay. But if you scroll a little further down, you yeah. know, after Malin, Maury, Tim Toomey, you get down to, you know, uh, and Denise Simmons is 26 and change and rising because she's still paying, uh, spending, you know, and still paying bills. she raises lots of money. But why is that so low? Um, well, because she got a lot of number one votes. So it's dollars oh, per vote, right. large oh, denominator. Look at that. That's right. So right. the more you get, the right. less you actually exactly. spend Exactly. So is it really, really the, no, the one. number we'll one, okay, number one uh, uh, dollars per number yeah. one vote is kind of a measure of effectiveness. Sure. Effectiveness, right. Sure. So the thing is, if you if you can spend relatively low money for mm -hmm. number one votes, and you've, yeah. you've been very very successful yeah. in terms of an efficiency. Now, if you scroll down a little bit further, yeah, you get down to something which is really kind of wouldn't this be the ideal? So further down, oh. further down. So there's oh right, wow. Here we go. So okay. Sumbul Siddiqui at ten dollars and ninety oh three yeah. cents per <laughs> vote. So she she's coming in under eleven yeah. bucks. And look what and she with, she got with twenty five hundred. Wow! Well, but that's because she topped the ticket. Oh, she I got know. the most number one vote. And she actually raised to me. That's but reasonable spent, there. Right, yeah. But she spent twenty seven thousand. Yeah. Twenty seven thousand uh -huh. dollars. And again, yeah. she, there may be more. Uh, we'll see, right? But the thing is, yeah. is that um, you know, nice, nice, efficient campaign. Ten dollars yeah. and ninety three I would say cents. Patty Nolan and rising. Too. Yeah. But Patty Nolan absolutely wins the prize yeah, here, right? Right. She gets so six, she yeah. spends, and again, there may be some more money that will come in in later reports. But mm -hmm. as of right now, she spent only sixteen thousand four hundred thirty seven dollars mm -hmm. for her sixteen eighty five number one votes, right. which is under ten bucks. Yep. Now this is like in Freddie Fantini territory, quite honestly, in yeah. terms of you know, yeah. uh, low cost per vote. It's kind of a very nice measure of a Where was kind Craig of Kelly? I'm just curious about Craig. Right there in the middle. So he spends a, yeah. so, tw you know, very... He got he, more number ones than he's ever gotten. Right, but, but the thing is, yeah. is that these, the slate phenomenon was definitely, uh, did not work in his But I, I see this category here, the 31, 33, I think that's reasonable. I think more than 35 right. is ridiculous. Right, but, the, but anyway, the, so know. the thing is, is so if you, if, yeah. if people are going to continue, and I don't mm -hmm. know whether they're going to continue, but there, yeah. you know, uh, it's still sitting there as you know a topic of conversation. Yeah, you know, you want to voluntary spending caps. Do you want to put limits in one? You know, how much of this can you even do within the law? It's not even clear to me at all. Right. I mean, but what's what's the? I mean, they've looked at different models, but they're not always convincing. Like I guess Seattle. I'm not convinced I, You know, at all. I just feel like why should we? You know, I mean, simple to her credit. I mean, she does retail, Paul. I mean, a lot of them do. That's but, right. You know, she knocks on doors. She shows up. That's right. And I and, think... And, and that does not require... It requires right. time, but doesn't right. necessarily require a lot of money. I didn't get any kind of uh, literature from her, yeah. I don't think. And actually, some yeah. other candidates, like Patty Nolan, also have yeah. a very, very well-developed network of well, people. Well, she was a school committee person you know, from for 14 school committee years. I mean, that helps Years and whatever. And the thing yeah. is, they didn't forget her. So no. the thing is, they were available. She's, got, she's almost like an incumbent. 
Yeah, almost, so you yeah. didn't have to um, spend enormous right. amounts of money to draw in the voters. Right. In fact, they were um, a lot of them were already there with you. Right. You still have to you still have to be nice to them. You know, you still have to reach out to them. Right. You but know, you're a known quantity. You didn't you know, have to get people your like name to be out. asked. Yeah. It's right. true. Yeah. You know, so um, but anyway, just as a ballpark estimate, yeah. so if, for candidates who are considering being, you know, future candidates, yeah. So just to be aware of what yeah. kind of money people have spent. How much you minimally might need to spend to, in order to be a credible candidate? Uh, mm -hmm. How much you could spend if you want to really, really throw your money in the furnace, <laughs> yeah. right? If you really, really. But it's a cautionary to. tale because obviously spending a lot doesn't necessarily, except in certain cases maybe, yeah. but you know it doesn't always guarantee you. And in fact, you, there are some spectacular examples in recent elections where oh, the candidates Paul Toner, Paul Toner yeah. spent a lot of money. He was did almost not right win. up there with the. Ken Reeves, when yeah. he was still around, spent enormous amount of money uh, in the campaign where he was not reelected. Yeah. Um, so if you if a person believes that it's all about the money, I think that's becoming less and less sure. true. Right. So. Not that, and I don't want to overstate this, but it, you know it may well be that the whole uh, any sort of promotion for you know public financing of, mini of municipal mm -hmm. elections or even limits and whatever yeah. is sort of missing the point. It's that more and more through the use of social media, good strong email lists, um, Just the old and networking on, knocking and on knocking doors, on doors, going to community events. May, yeah, maybe the money, yeah. at least in local elections, yeah. maybe the money aspect of this is kind of becoming moot. If they want it to be like, if you as a taxpayer, and you know, your ex, do you want this to go to a, fine, but I will say no. You know, right, right, okay. exactly. But I'm, I just so think it's a bad we idea. We don't actually have a mechanism for That's even true, doing that. That's true, because we don't really, we, unless you we, own property. We, and, and there's stuff, no such yeah. thing as a local income tax or anything oh, like you'd have that to, anyway. That's another yeah. home rule So petition. how would you even yeah. get people to sort of say, okay, it would have to be it. a voluntary contribution. Or you'd have to have a fund like set up like we do for meaningful yeah. things like fires, but this would be, I don't think it would get a lot of people. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, so uh, we're kind of okay. winding down for this half yeah. hour. So, you know, I'm sure there'll be a few other kind of interesting things from elections to talk about some oh, other yeah. day. But we're right. pretty much exhausted most of what needs yes. to be said. Yes, you'll come up with Inauguration is sure. uh, January 6th at 10 a.m. Oh, that's always, so I always won't be the, around, but I'm sure you'll morning. see it. Okay. All right. Anyway, see, see you in a few minutes on Cambridge Inside Out.